it's a new day and therefore medicosis would continue on with our series about bleeding and coagulation disorders. In previous videos we have talked about acetyl salicylic acid, salicylate poisoning and stuff like that. Today we'll turn our attention to the P2Y12 receptor, one of the most important receptors for the platelets. With that being said, now let's get started. As you know from previous videos, platelets are biconvex, they are pieces of megakaryocytes, they are not even cells. Structure of the platelet, we have the plasma membrane, which is lipid, and the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm has lots of stuff, and the plasma membrane is covered by the glycoprotein coat, which contains receptors, so receptors are protein on the glycoprotein of the cell membrane. I've told you before in my physiology and biology lectures, the cell membrane is composed of proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates. Where are the receptors? They are part of the protein of the cell membrane. Cell membrane proteins are divided into integral and peripheral. Integral takes the whole freaking thickness of the cell membrane. Peripheral just attached to one surface. Receptors are here, part of the peripheral proteins on the cell membrane. The great exception is something called the integrin groups of receptor proteins but they are takes they take the whole freaking sickness but they are a receptor nonetheless this is a great exception as you know hemostasis has many steps vasoconstriction temporary plate plug coagulation fibrolysis etc temporary plate plug is the story of the great receptor p to y12 which is today's topic I've talked about primary hemostasis in a previous video and there is a great mnemonic about the platelet plug. It's in the bleeding and coagulation playlist. First, platelets adhere to the underlying subendothelial collagen via GP1B, which is a receptor on the platelet. Then, platelet activation occurs. Platelets get active, they go crazy, and they secrete the ADP, the great whistleblower and ADP will whistle to other platelets as I've told you before. ADP starts whistling to other platelets. I can't whistle. Let me try it again. Same idea. Okay, ADP is whistling to other platelets. How? By expressing the ADP-dependent expression of GP2B3A receptor. Okay, but the story is more complicated than that. ADP has many sub-receptors or many receptors P2Y1 and P2Y12. They do what? They they perform a conformational change on this GP2B3A and transform it from an inactive garbage useless receptor into the active receptor GP2B3A that can adhere to other platelets. This is the P2Y12 story. Adhesion, activation, aggregation. Don't forget ADP, P2Y12, Activate the GP2B3A from inactive to active via conformational change. GP2B3A will help platelet aggregate together because each platelet has one. So what is the purpose and mission of P2Y12? It facilitates the steps for platelet aggregation. P2Y12 receptor. Location. It's a receptor. So it's on the surface of the platelet. Structure. Receptors are proteins. Anything that's active in your body is a protein. It's one of 12 types of purinergic receptors, whatever that means, from P2Y1 to P2Y14. But from 1 to 14 should be 14 receptors. Okay, honey, two numbers are missing. Same thing with coagulation factors. You know we have 13 coagulation factors? Yes, but factor 6 is missing. So there are 12. Hello. Function. They promote platelet aggregation. Yep leading to coagulation because without platelet aggregation in vain there is blood coagulation you need platelet aggregation first then blood coagulation next p2y12 is a chemoreceptor for adp okay so adp is here this is this molecule and p2y12 is the receptor for the adp p2y12 is gi coupled which will lead to decreased cyclic AMP. When you decrease cyclic AMP, the GP2B3A from inactive is being transformed into active. Well done, platelet aggregation. Thank you so much. And this is the story of primary hemostasis. 
And this is precisely how P2Y12 works by lowering the cyclic AMP. As a general rule, when you have low cyclic AMP in the platelets, you have increased platelet aggregation. When they go low, we go high. In my previous video about the difference between thromboxane A2 and prostacycline, I've explained how thromboxane A2 works. It's a GI coupled receptor. Translation, it inhibits this step. It inhibits the conversion of ATP into cyclic AMP. Do you remember the enzyme? Adenylate cyclase. What happens with no cyclic AMP? With no cyclic AMP, there is more calcium. Calcium contraction, calcium coagulation. So the lower the cyclic AMP, the greater the platelet aggregation. On the other hand, the higher the cyclic AMP, the lower the platelet aggregation. When they go low, we go high. P2Y1 is GQ coupled, P2Y12 is GI coupled. So platelet adhesion, platelet activation, and then platelet aggregation thanks to ADP, P2Y12, which is a receptor for ADP, converts the GP2B3A from the inactive state into the active state. Okay, so let's do it this way. ADP whistling to other platelets via GP2B3A expression, but it's more complicated than that. P2Y12, which is GI coupled, GI for inhibitory, inhibits the conversion of ATP into cyclic AMP. Now you have no cyclic AMP. When you have no cyclic AMP, you have more calcium, calcium coagulation. You convert GP2B3A from the inactive form into the active form, and then platelet aggregation is on. If your crazy pharmacology professor explained to you as clearly as this, I will resign from YouTube and work for a garbage company. Now you know how important the P2Y12 receptor is to the process of platelet aggregation. Now imagine if there was a class of medications capable of inhibiting P2Y12 receptor and therefore inhibit platelet aggregation and prevent thrombosis. That would be wonderful. Oh wait, it already exists. Yes, it's called P2Y12 receptor inhibitors. Medications such as clopidogrel, prasugrel, teclopidine, and ticagrelor. Who in his right mind named these things? If you love mnemonics, try picmonics. Pictures in a mnemonic. It's amazing. So, for example, warfarin is the war fairy and vitamin K is the viking king. And do you know that warfarin inhibits vitamin K dependent factor? So, this war fairy will hit this viking king with her bazooka. It's, it's just fun. Go to Picmonic and the link is in the description. Picmonic is not a sponsor of this video. I have a great PDF about acetyl salicylic acid. It's available on Patreon for just a dollar. It's basically free. Come on. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and join the tribe. Hit the bell to get notified and follow me on Facebook. I have more than 95 cases there and I have many more cases and all of my notes and all of my illustrations that I'm doing right now are available on patreon.com slash medicosis. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard.